Hi there. Thank you for joining today. My name is Marie Norden. Um, before I get started, I want to give a big thank you to the coordinators of FOSS Backstage for putting together this hybrid event. I was hoping to be there in person, but I was not able to make it. Um, as a fellow event organizer, I wish you all a smooth conference and a long break afterwards. It's an honor to speak to everyone here today, and I hope that my presentation provides some food for thought and discussion over the course of the conference. I'm here today to talk about RISE and the importance of recognition, incentive, support, and empowerment in community health and how we provide that in Fedora. I am the Fedora Project's Community Action and Impact Coordinator. Um, that's a long community forge title for community architect slash manager slash support person. And my nickname is F Cake. Yes, like the cake. Um, so here's the slide about me. I'm not going to give you a history, but I want to mention that I have a non-traditional background for the tech industry. My degree is in fine art, graphic design, and photography, and I also had a short stint purchasing. So how did I make it to becoming Fedora's F-Cake? I'm going to share a couple of personal anecdotes throughout the presentation to demonstrate how I ended up here. In short, my experience with Fedora over the years and the various elements of Rise inspired a desire inside me to work with the Fedora community. Also, here you can see some wallpapers, some logos, some um, badges that I've designed, as well as some of my personal artwork. So, okay, let's get into it. What are we talking about today? So I'm here to talk about RISE, recognition, incentive, support, and empowerment, and how I apply that framework to my work in Fedora. So I actually came up with the concept of RISE just as I was stepping into the F cake role at the end of 2019. And it came from observations I had made as a contributor to the community for six years. To be frank, some of it was inspired by the things I thought Fedora could improve, but only because I was able to see what we were doing well and where the gaps were. I actually realized I didn't forward my slides because I have a separate clicker thing. Here's my personal slide. And now we're moving forward. Clicker has been clicked. Okay, so um, Fedora isn't a perfect model of RISE because of its massive size, its extended history. There will just always be more that we can do and do better. I'm happy to discuss how Fedora can do it better. Um, and I also stuck in a few points uh, focused on community manager, caretaker perspective, reflecting on my own experiences. It's important to acknowledge how challenging this work can be, no matter how fulfilling it is. So all the concepts of RISE are pretty much interconnected. And the practical ideas generated can sometimes and often do fall into multiple categories. So one could say that incentives are a type of support or that recognition provides empowerment. And that's, that's okay. It's worth looking at these concepts individually. So I have listed a bunch of ideas on the slides. I won't have time to go into every single one. As I mentioned, I'd be happy to talk about this more. You can find me on LinkedIn or in Fedora chat spaces. I also want to note that this information applies and be helpful to anyone working or volunteering in communities. For example, any contributor can provide recognition or support to another contributor. Um, Maybe this talk will highlight a place where your community is lacking. And now you can see a way to improve that. All right, next slide. Let's talk about recognition. What are some ways to recognize folks in community? So the RISE concept has been rolling around in my brain for some time, um, but I spent some time researching for this talk to make sure I did indeed know what I was talking about. Um, and as I gathered a list of ways to recognize contributors, I made an observation that most or all of these are associated with fun. The rest are common sense, like giving folks credit where it's due, whether it's in a blog post, talking about a group effort, or on Twitter, your Git repo, or wherever it might be. Um, 
or using metrics to gain a better understanding of who's contributing where and how. So the thing that I want to highlight here are badges. Badges are huge for Fedora and also for me in particular. My start with Fedora was an internship in 2013 for badges design. And I've designed probably 200 or more of them at this point. Um, Fedora Badges is a gamification system for contributing to Fedora, where you earn badges associated with different actions in the Fedora ecosystem. People get excited about badges, and I think there's a lot of reasons for that. In part, because Fedora is a friendly, fun community, and because we're a bit competitive. Also because participation and winning badges creates a sense of pride in oneself and also in Fedora. But most importantly, in my opinion, it's because the artwork has both reinforced and built upon Fedora's identity. It's friendly, cute, clever designs get people excited about their thing in Fedora, whatever that might be. When you strengthen folks' identity with your community, they feel that sense of belonging and well-being. Badge systems should match the identity of your community to help build that connection. Fedora has a friendly community, a very fun community, and we've always had pandas and characters and this and that around. But your community might have a more serious or refined feeling to it. You know, you really want to choose artwork that matches the identity of your community. So you'll note here that we've immortalized the Stroop Waffle as our 400 cookie badges. So Stroop Waffles are a Fedora thing that we've had at many person in-person conferences. So we put that in the art to tie back to that, that shared experience and that shared identity we have. Um, I'm guessing that plenty of communities utilize Karma, but I want to be sure that I mention it here because it's a great peer-to-peer -peer recognition system. Um, giving someone a plus plus in channel gives them a Karma point, and in Fedora that translates to cookies, which translates to badges. Um, we reset our badge counters every release every six months so that folks can give more cookies with the same users release after release. Um, we've had other recognition incentives We've including a Fedora Appreciation Week. We've promoted happiness packets with Fedora, a virtual way to send thank you notes, contributor stories where we highlight Fedoran's experiences. Um, and we also adapted contributor stories into a video series for our recent Fedora Week of Diversity. Um, so just a few notes specific to community management work. In this role, I like to send thank you notes to contributors to recognize and to show them that I'm seeing the work that they're doing. And sometimes it's that emotional labor type of work that doesn't get recognized in a badges type of way. Um, these can be a little long. I also try to send gifts to speakers if it works out. Um, I think here it's important to note that different folks appreciate different kinds of recognition. So it could be a matter of personal preference, or some cultural norms that might be different from your own. So I've learned to be okay with having someone kind of decline my appreciation, my compliment or my gift. It might mean it just wasn't the best fit for them in whatever way. So having conscious forms of recognition in your communities like badges, um, processes and norms can help reduce friction around any cultural differences and make sure that everyone is feeling appreciated. Getting to know people is the best way to understand how they want to be recognized and appreciated. All right, on to the next one here. So let's talk about incentives. What are your incentives to contribute? So incentives for participation really vary from person to person. Uh, I think in this category, Fedora's longstanding history is a major benefit. The Friends Foundation of Fedora really shines here and carries a major amount of weight when it comes to incentives. I can speak to this one from personal experience. This is absolutely one of my top three reasons for staying involved in Fedora way back in 2014 after my internship ended. Um, the people I met at my first Fedora conference are still some of my best friends or people I work with all the time. By building that Friends Foundation into our culture, we have created a self-sustaining incentive. This touches on the identity component that runs through RISE. I observe that folks feel a strong incentive to participate when they feel like they're truly a part of Fedora. 
So what other incentives are there? People get to do something different than their everyday work, get to learn new things, or people need to get things done at work. Um, one of the reasons I enjoyed joining the Fedora community was that I felt challenged intellectually and inspired to learn. It brought in my perspective and showed me that life was my life was just one way of living and that there's an entire world of different cultures and way of life out there. As a young person, that was hugely valuable for my growth as a, as a human. Um, also, never underestimating the power of swag. In 2021, we completed an amazing swag project for our yearly contributor conference, Nest with Fedora. That's the virtual version. You may have also heard of the in-person version, Flock to Fedora. So usually some of our budget is going to Flock, so we we're able to use those resources along with sponsored donations to pull together a huge thank you to our community of contributors. So the Nest swag pack included 20 plus items that were both classics, you know, your standard stickers, keycaps, these sorts of things, and also unique. And of course we had items from our sponsors in there too. So in order to make the swag pack awesome, I worked with an intern to create a special design for the box sent around Fedora's found four foundations. The design went onto a bandana size cloth and we kept this design and project totally under wraps. It was a surprise for the community when they received that box. So this was a little bit of fan service, if you will. Um, we received many requests for Fora Foundation's theme swag. So all the, the care and effort that went into that swag pack paid off. And we sent over 650 of these packages and we have gotten so, so, so much positive feedback. People sent me notes, took pictures for social media, and I see it proudly displayed on video conference calls all the time. All right, on to support. How does your community support contributors? Here we go. So this one I feel leans heavily on leadership, but if you're doing that effectively, support can be built right into your governance and processes. If your community is diverse and global like Fedora, it's important to acknowledge that support looks different for everyone. Um, the best way to work with this is to set your own community norms around support in hopes of fostering a genuine feeling of being supported. In all the team projects and teams I lead, I'm sure to focus on people, and I do that in a number of ways. The number one way I do that is by helping teams set goals, that match their available time and resources and also strategy. So this is one thing that as a contributor, I felt like Fedora could improve on. Guidance and support from leadership needs to be more than monetary resources and an infrastructure and a go get them sometimes. So being hands-on goes a long way in building that community health. Um, I'm sure to check in with people's current mind state. This can be a great way to build trust and provide support. This is another place where it's important to keep different cultures and preferences in mind. Everyone opens up at a different pace based on what has shaped them as people. So we're not forcing people to share, we're not oversharing ourselves, um, but in order to lead with empathy, I find that being a little bit vulnerable about myself creates a genuine environment of support. After I speak up, Others are more comfortable speaking up and will send me direct messages. Um, I find that direct messaging with certain people who are important in the community or just giving that a chance can sometimes be actually very useful and it's kind of a inclusivity effort. Although I know there's some back and forth on, you know, uh, responding and accepting to direct messages. I find that some people are just going to be um, more willing to speak to you and provide their actual feedback in that setting. So it can be used well. Um, I want to touch on the flywheel theory point, which I've absolutely borrowed from my awesome coworker and Fedora program manager, Ben Cotton. So a flywheel is a part of a machine that provides steady output and allows operations to continue with less or more power. So the idea is to have a flywheel person on your different community teams and that is a, can be really beneficial long term. This is a person on the team who is committed to showing up, running meetings when needed, occasionally taking on 
tasks to cover any substantial gaps, hanging out in chat rooms. In theory, this is a great way to delegate and also ensure long-term support during times when most of your contributors drop off the map, which we know can happen. Um, I played this role for a couple teams in Fedora, and I think the DEI team in Fedora has benefited greatly from this. A couple years ago, the team was feeling burnout and disheartened, so I made sure to keep meetings running and saying, okay, take care of yourself when people couldn't make it, or I just had to cancel that meeting because no one showed up, um, supporting annual uh, activities. Um, the team has recovered and kind of naturally have started to meet bi-weekly um, for three or four months now. So I'm very excited about, you know, being the flywheel for that person and helping them get through kind of a rough time. So a note for community managers is, wow, all of this takes a lot of energy when you're working with a community full time. Um, I heard of this burnout, but I didn't know until I was deep into it. And folks, I don't recommend it. I love providing support to others. It's definitely one of my strengths but it can come at a cost. So I'm trying and I, I also urge others to um, make sure to prioritize your own well-being. really in any job, but definitely in a job like this, where you're giving so much of this type of energy, defining boundaries such as working hours, how many hours a day you will work, we're practicing how to say no to things, um, like our last talk, stepping down from things, um, things Think about what's allowed outside of your boundaries because they kind of always come up. And then talk with your coworkers, your support system, your manager about situations that are making you uncomfortable, are not healthy for you, and make changes so that they are healthy and comfortable. Community management is both emotionally satisfying and also draining. <laughs> and those emotions need to be processed and that takes time and energy. And it is work to process that stuff. And just in case it still needs to be said, no work on your phone. <laughs> I also want to point out here that the open source way has a great chapter on mental health for community managers. So feel free to check that out. All right. I got to open my phone again because it went dead. Here we go. On to. Oh. There we go. On to empowerment. Okay, last but not least, let's talk about empowerment. Do you feel empowered to get things done in your community? Where does that feeling come from? So here we are. I think we can hit on an important point right away, which is developing and enforcing code of conduct. It's really important to make your spaces psychologically safe for people. There are some great places to start that already exist, like the Contributor Covenant, I think having a process to enforce the code is crucial and one can't exist without the other. So make sure that you have both of those in place. At this point, some folks won't participate in communities without codes of conduct. Maybe because they are part of a historically underrepresented group and have dealt with a lot of harassment or simply on principle. Um, those folks aren't going to feel empowered to exist and contribute in the environment without those protections in place. And there's always going to be opposition to codes of conduct. And there's a usual set of arguments against it, which we're not going to go into here because it would take a very long time. But I'll briefly say that if someone wants to argue with a set of community norms that say be nice to each other, you probably don't want them in your community anyways. So on to the next point here. I cannot say enough about the importance of mentorship in the empowerment category. This is one of those personal anecdotes, anecdotes and one of those top three reasons I stayed in Fedora and why I'm here right now today. Um, I had an amazing mentor, Marin Duffy. Um, I have the pleasure of working and learning from her even today. And she's been one of my biggest cheerleaders over the years and has just really empowered me in the Fedora community. She was my mentor on Fedora badges and I continued to work on it after my internship. And I remember asking her about some changes I wanted to implement. And she was just like, yep, you know, make the decision with your team of people. But yes, it, it, do it as you see fit. And my mind was literally just blown. I felt all kinds of good from that interaction. And for someone outside of tech trying to free to make it as a freelance graphic designer, 
I felt a sense of professional accomplishment and belonging that I had never felt yet. So empowering through mentorship can provide the push for someone to go from interested to fully invested. Mentoring is also a great, um, great way for experienced community members to contribute. It can take a little or a lot of effort. You can mentor just in channel by answering questions, or you can take on a more formal mentorship. So I know you hear about community managed work, and this time I'm going to borrow from my coworker, Dorka Vlovkla. No work is beneath me. I find one of the most empowering things to do is work right alongside contributors and to take on some of those most dreaded tasks, unless someone else is really excited about doing it. it I feel it demonstrates that we're all on the same team, not that you just are simply expecting free labor from people. Um, and a part of that is that support piece too, where um, I help empower folks by providing the project management. This is great to help set goals, keep a timeline, coordinating resources. By doing all of that, your contributors are empowered to work on the things they want to work on um, and, and you know, continue to foster their passion for FOSS and, in this case, Fedora. Um, so in Fedora, we're also trying to source this role with something called the Fedora Program Management Team. So all of that work doesn't fall on a couple of people who are really good at it or naturals at it. Um, we are trying to share those skills and make it something that's um, easy to ask for and well understood. All right. And let's wrap it up. Here we go. There's the clicker. All right. So some key takeaways. Um, because of global communities all over the world and our varied cultures, um, it's really important to set or establish community norms around these things because everyone really does these things kind of differently in their own countries and their own families and, and social circles. Um, and to help create a sense of belonging and well-being, focusing on reinforcing identity, specifically around your recognition and your incentives. Um, to support people successfully, prioritize them. Work to create a psychologically safe space. Um, what's great about RISE is that all the concepts are interconnected, meaning you can do one practical thing that fulfills a lot of these needs. And last but not least, community managers and caretakers, make sure to also take care of yourself. Thanks. I'm not sure how much time there is left for questions or if there are any, but I really appreciate everyone tuning in and being there to listen to this talk today. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Marie. Um, there is still time for some questions in case there are any here in the audience. Nothing so far. Let me have a look on our online platform. I don't think there are questions now. Um, so, uh, yes, thank you very much, Marie. Very much enjoyed your talk. Thank you. Um, and bye.